Hey guys, the Simonetti source is here. I want to take a second here to talk about the whole Brandon Drury trade with the Arizona Diamondbacks and the feedback on Twitter, uh, going through my feed, looking at the direct messages, comments directly to me on how Yankee fans are thinking of this deal. One of the big ones I hear a lot of is that this is a slap in the face to Miggy Andujar. I don't see it being a slap in the face to Andy, so I'm going to go over it one by one here on why I don't believe that. The downside to Miguel Andujar that everybody already knows is the defense. We hear a lot about footwork. We hear he has a cannon arm. Footwork is a problem. The Yankees obviously felt last year Andujar was not ready to come up and play third base on a regular basis. Seems like they are still not comfortable with that taking place. Here's the good side. <clears throat> Brian Cashman stated yesterday they feel Andujar is still a long-term piece. He also said he feels Brandon Drury is a long-term piece. So when you hear that, you got to think, all right, something's going to have to give, and it will. That's Major League Baseball for you. Things play out, and things do not play out. Best case scenario for the New York Yankees is Brandon Drury is the guy they hope they get. We heard Drury today say he feels he has not scratched the surface of his potential as a hitter. He feels last year was half the numbers he could put up. Had a lot of good Yankee reporters out there talking the same thing today, saying about those 30-plus doubles he hit, if seven, eight of those turn into homers, the Yankees have got a steal. I agree. When it comes to Andohar, Andohar might tear it up in AAA, might improve on his defense. The reason this is the best case scenario for the Yankees is if Drury were to go down for whatever reason, Drury can, I mean, excuse me, Andohar can come up and play third. Also, say if Glaber Torres needs more time, or if Torres is injured, if Wade goes down, the Yankees can always move Drury to second base. I know they want him to stay at third, understandable, but do not forget the versatility. Mainly played second last year. Every scout that I have read about regarding Drury, the Yankees alone, and people that I speak to directly have told me that Drury is a natural third baseman, so that might help him also. But again... Drury could move to second, and Duhar can come up to play third. The other good thing of it here is everything works out the way I would think the Yankees would want it, is that both of these guys are spectacular. If that is the case, the Yankees have an excellent decision to make on who their third baseman would be in the offseason. This brings me to Manny Machado. If all works well for the Yankees, Drury can now become trade bait. Miguel Andohar can now become trade bait. And the Yankees also have the option of going after one Manny Machado. I myself am on record as saying I give it about an 85% chance that Miguel and I'm sorry, that Manny Machado will be a Yankee in the offseason. He has interest in the Yankees, and the Yankees have interest in him. Does it mean it will work? It does not. Does that 85% that I said go down throughout the year if Drury is very good and Andujar is very good? Of course. And it should. I am a huge fan of Manny Machado. I like Manny Machado. I don't think he is anywhere near his true potential. He also has stated he wants to be a shortstop. Does Didi move the third? Would the Yankees then try to find a different position for Drury or Andujar? We already know Brian Cashman is not a fan of Drury in the outfield, per his comments. So where does that leave the Yankees? If you're thinking in a baseball sense, Drury will not be a free agent for a couple of years, is also not arbitration eligible. Same thing for Miguel Andujar. If Drury were to put up a 270, 20, 20 homer, 80 RBI year, and maybe Miguel Andohar has a very strong AAA season again, if he's not traded by the deadline, do you, as the Yankees, 
still go after Manny Machado. When you have Bryce Harper available, when you have top starting pitching available, the Yankees are in a great spot. This leads me to the overall final idea here of why this deal makes so much sense. Brandon Drury has been in the majors for three years, two of those full seasons. Both of those years have been solid. Not great, solid. He is also 25 years old. About four months younger than Aaron Judge. It's not nothing special, that's just a talking point. Aaron Judge is Aaron Judge. Brandon Drury is not going to be Aaron Judge. But what Drury can be is another young centerpiece of an already established young Yankee team. At some point next season, the Yankees' infield will consist of Gary Sanchez behind a plate, who is younger than Drury and Judge, Greg Bird at first base, Glaber Torres at second, Didi Gregorius at short, and Brandon Drury at third base. A very young and solid infield. If things go the way the Yankees hope, one of the most productive infields in baseball. That is, of course, if Glaber is the guy most projecting to be, strong average, decent power. If Brandon Drury gets better, as most people expect him to, I have yet to see a real negative report on Drury's character or his ability. So again, this move makes sense. This is not a slap in the face to Miguel Andohar. This is more of a take your time, you will be called when you're ready. The Yankees know Andohar better than we do as fans No doubt about it. Nobody can argue that. There is something in Andujar's defense that the Yankees are concerned about. If not, Andujar would be the third baseman. I solely believe that. I think he would have been the third baseman last year after Torres got injured. Reminds me a lot of why I am not high on Chance Adams. Chance Adams had countless times last year he could come up and pitch for the Yankees in their rotation. The Yankees never made that call because he struggled more with his location and also throwing his changeup. Now, that's a whole other story. The overall topic of this conversation here, of my report here, is the jury trade makes sense on many fronts. You are adding a high, upside, youthful player. A young guy who has already have playoff experience and has played two full seasons at the major league level for a playoff competing Arizona Diamondbacks. Take that into account. This is a guy who has played on a larger stage. Not New York, not Boston, not LA, but has played for a contending team. This is a guy that most scouts will agree. He is going to improve. They like him. They like what he can do. I read a lot today about pitch recognition. I read a lot today about patience. He is entering a lineup who is going to give him patience to get better. If Drury struggles in spring, I doubt he is not the Yankees' third baseman. I think the Yankees wanted this guy for a long time. I reported it before Joel Sherman did on the New York Post, well before he did, that the Yankees were interested in Corbin and Brandon Drury. We found out the Yankees have been trying to get Drury for multiple seasons now. They gave up Nick Solak to get him. Nick Solak is not a slouch prospect. Tyler Widener is not a scratch prospect. These are guys the Yankees liked. So we will see 
What happens? As I said, this is a very smart move for the Yankees. We will see how it works out. I, for one, believe in Drury. I think he could possibly become a solid centerpiece for this team for years to come or a strong trade piece. That is also the case with Miguel Andujar. This has been Peter Simonetti of The Simonetti Source. Please let me know in the comments below what you think about the Brandon Drury trade. Thank you guys.